along with Miles Holiday, I'm Randy Roberts. We do the high school football season upon us. A good matchup here. First ever meeting for us between a couple of schools tonight as the Eagles play host to the Bulldogs of Columbus Grove. Hey, partner, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Two teams coming off an opening week win. Two teams that look like they have aspirations to make it to the playoffs. This is kind of a playoff uh, atmosphere, playoff game early in the season. Our pregame show is sponsored tonight by the State Bank, invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Miles, let's jump in to these two teams. Let's start with the visiting Bulldogs of Columbus Grove coming off a 34-23 win a week ago at home against Pandora Gilboa. Game we saw special Thursday night kickoff to the high school football season. A lot of the uh, same things can be talked about. Both of these teams jumping out to big leads, kind of holding on in the end for Grove. They led Pandora 27-9 at the half before getting that win over the Rockets. Kind of wondered who was going to carry the football for them. Turns out Trent Barraza, pretty good running back. 19 carries, 182 yards, a couple of touchdowns on runs of 3 and 84 yards. Yeah, Trent Barraza, the super sophomore, he's got electric feet. Watch out for him at homecoming this year, ladies because he's going to put on performance at the dance. He dances every single Friday night. 182 yards, had the really long touchdown, two touchdowns on the night. You better corral him with a bunch of defenders because he'll make the first guy miss every time. Now, one thing that uh, will kind of come up for both of these teams as we get into our pregame, they had to be pretty happy with their offenses, defenses, probably a couple of things they found to work on this week. Yeah, both teams way over 300 yards offensively. Uh, you take a look at Columbus Grove, 363 yards total, a majority of that on the ground. They love to run the football, and as we mentioned, Trenton Barraza, 182 yards on the ground. But their quarterback, uh, Tre uh, Brenton Renner, 6 of 12, 146 yards. As a senior, did a really good job, Randy, I thought, of using his feet to extend drives, picked up a couple of third downs that way, and he made smart throws. So the senior really developed over the, uh, last year. He's going to be a guy that they're going to lean on again here tonight. He talked about the 363 yards for the Bulldogs. Defense did allow 350, and I'm sure that was a point of emphasis through the practices this week. They did come up, however, with three interceptions, kind of led them, especially coming in that second half. Miles tells me it's four. Yeah, four, four interceptions. Remember the big one they had for a touchdown? That was Schrader, that Landon Schrader took it and uh, ran it into the end zone from about 20 yards out against uh, Pandora Gilboa. But the guy that really sealed the game last week from defensively, Tag Cook, he had the big interception as Pandora Gilboa was driving in, make it a, a one-score game, just kind of bear pawed it out of the air. It was an impressive play. Tag Cook, if you haven't watched him play, number 50 inside linebacker for them. He is a contact magnet. You'll love watching see it, watching him play tonight. Yeah, Tad Cook also nearing, I believe, uh, a record at Columbus Grove. Yeah, a record for career uh, tackles. He had 12 a week ago. Last week he was 46 tackles away from breaking the school record. So if my math is correct, he's getting closer to that record. He's going to have to have another a good game tonight, though, because that is a high-powered offense over looking at him at Liberty Bet. Well, let's talk about the homestanding Eagles of Liberty Bet and also 1-0 coming off a 31-27 win over Liberty a good shot here, and it kind of leads into the biggest uh, change of the offseason. But the new turf applied here at Eagle Stadium. The grounds crew's done a great job. The grass is all even everywhere. Doesn't look like there's any dry marks. Now, we were on it in pregame, folks. It is a fast track, and it is going to be a fun game to watch on this as both teams do have some speed. And Eagles, again, coming off that win over Lipsick, led 24-14 at the half before the Vikings scored a couple of fourth-quarter touchdowns to make the game a little bit closer to Lipsick. One of those teams expected to make a, a run in Division 7 by quarterback Cam Garlock. New York's going to get big things out of him. 20 of 29, 333 yards passing, four touchdowns. Brother Lincoln's favorite target, six catches, 153 yards, couple of touchdowns. Yeah, now real tough for Lincoln, the, the politic, right? Just go home say, I'm open every single time, brother. Throw me the football. But uh, what a night Cam Garlock, the left-handed quarterback, had. 20 of 29, high percentage throws. You're going to see a lot of quick action. You're going to see a lot of four or five wide rec receiver stuff. It's one of those offenses where they want to get the ball out of the hands quickly and let the receivers catch it and go. And, uh, Lincoln, not the only target for his brother, Cam, but Seth Elkert, six catches, 90 yards in the touchdown. 
Cason Doolittle, three catches, 46 in his score. This team's got a little bit of speed to burn. Yeah, Lincoln Garlic, six catches, 153 and two TDs. And as you said, Seth Elkert, six catches for 90. Now, one guy that they really need to get going for them if they're going to progress. They've been worried about the running back situation. They're going to have to get Caden Foltz involved a little bit more. Seven carries, seven yards. That's not going to get it done moving forward. You're going to have to run the football a little bit. You know, last year, Tony, Toby Cullert was a big ground carrier for them, 968 yards. Who's going to be the next guy? Well, they're hoping it is going to be Caden Fultz, but they're going to have to be a little bit more committed to running the football as they move forward. And we talked about Columbus Grove, 363 yards of offense while allowing 350. But this number for Liberty Benton, they were actually outgained in that win against Lipsick. They had 370 yards of offense. As a coach, you probably have to like that number when uh, you come home, when you when you find when you tabulate the numbers. I know you don't know it on the sideline. <laughs> this isn't a college or pro game where you have the, the iPad. But the defense allowed 427. I'm sure, much like Grove and the number that they allowed against Pandora Gilboa, that probably came up in practice a time or two. Yeah, the four three defense that uh, Liberty Benton likes to run is great if you have linebackers, right? Well, they have linebackers, but two of them are young guys, just freshmen. They're gonna have to improve in a hurry. Miles Bailey, number five of freshmen, and Zach Elkert, number uh, 20, the uh, outside linebacker, he's a freshman. Now he's a big fella, 6'3", 195, but you know, being a freshman, you gotta get some experience to play football. So they're gonna really rely on Brady Berkemeyer, their inside linebacker, number 34. Now the good thing though, partner, is they do, are, they do have a guy up front that will help them with their linebackers as they get better. Devin Maltabian, Altabine, number 75, he is a hoss. Keep an eye on him, 6'2", 255, getting uh, contacts from colleges. Ohio Domin Dominican really likes him. He, he, if you look at his senior picture, he is pouring uh, pouring syrup on pancakes. So that, that, that cracked me up. I looked at that and I was like, that is some funny stuff right there. He is a physical dude. So there's one guy that uh, Andy Schaefer, the head coach of Columbus Grove, was really concerned about. Devin Multibine, the defensive tackle for Liberty Benton. And you talked about that rush defense for Liberty Benton. Of course, uh, Lipsick, known as a strong power running team, ran for 190 yards on this Eagle defense a week ago. Yeah, it's, it's something that they take pride in over at Columbus Grove. Being physical, they have a physical fullback, tight end type, A.J. Schaefer. They are physical on the line of scrimmage with Tad Cook and Kyle Lathrop on that last left-hand side. Don't forget Kylan Mays, though, the center, the sophomore. He's going to be a really good one. And one of the few high school teams that have can have a center pull and lead on run plays. He's that athletic. I don't want to give away too much before we get into it, but is some of that coming up in our state bank checks of the game? Just oh, a few minutes. Oh, you might be foreshadowing a little bit, I partner. Don't, I, don't, I don't know the checks until I read them on the screen like everyone else. I have... Zero <laughs> insight on what goes on at the head of one miles holiday until we meet for a game. I've none. Hey, one thing we got to also talk about with Case and Doolittle. I wrote it down and I start it, so I know it's important. Doolittle also a 42-yard field goal. And again, when we saw Columbus Grove last week, we go, "How in the world is Columbus Grove gonna? What what can they do for a kicking game?" Right. Right. And we found the answer out pretty quick. They just re plug in another kid, don't they? But uh, talk, talk about Liberty Benton real quick. Jason Doolittle, he is a good kicker. Second team all Ohio a year ago. 45 of 58 on P8 uh, point after attempts. So he's a good one. He's got really big leg averages, about 50 yards on the kickoff. But uh, you're right about uh, the kicking game of Columbus Grove. Shep Holker, I thought he did a really nice mm -hmm. job taking over for Reese Bierhoff, who, as we know, is one of the best kickers in the nation a year ago. And again, this meeting, the first ever between these two schools. Miles and I were kind of, uh, was proclaimed the right word? I was kind of a little thrown off by that, especially these two schools separated by just 21 miles on Route 12. And before we get to any further in our pregame, we'll step aside as it looks like the Liberty Benton uh, marching band just about ready to perform our national anthem.
Raider Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here. Eagle Stadium in uh, Liberty, Benton getting cut. Close kickoff here, live football for you tonight here on WOSN. Miles, it is time to get to our State Bank checks of the game. Now, let's take a look at the visitors, Columbus Grove. First and foremost, number one, pop the bubble. They worked all week long on how to contain that bubble screen action that Liberty Benton likes to run. Well, they're going to let them catch it, but they're going to come up and pop them. They want to tackle them, get them to the ground. It's okay to let them catch short balls. Don't let them run by you, though. So they're going to pop the bubble. Number two, eye it up. Hey, you're going to see something unique tonight. You're going to see some old high school eye formation. You're going to see A.J. Schaefer once in a while at fullback behind the quarterback and of course Braza at the tailback position so I had up run it right down the throw at those freshman linebackers and number three T.O.P. you know what T.O.P. stands for time of possession time of possession they need to possess the football because the high power potency the quick strike ability of Liberty Benton is a scary thing so if they have the if you have the football they can't score so eat the clock time of possession big for the Bulldogs tonight. How about some state bank checks for the Eagles of Liberty Benton? Boy, number one, don't get Cook. Tag Cook uh, last week, he, he looked like Jefferson at Richmond High, just running around destroying people on the defensive side. He is a contact magnet. Watch out for him, he will put a hurt on you. So don't get Cook, run away from him. Number two, empty it up, go four or five wide receivers, stretch that Bulldog defense across the field. Try to get them to play one-on-one. -on -one. And then number three, add more garlic. Hey, that's a great recipe for this offense, isn't it? You got the quarterback and the receiver. Boy, a week ago they were explosive. Cam, four touchdowns, passing over 300 yards. Lincoln, 153 yards, two touchdowns. So add more garlic, your dish is going to be really good. That is your State Bank checks of the game. And again, our pregame sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Columbus Grove and Liberty Bet is the State Bank. Invest in the Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. There you see our officials for tonight's contest. John Clay, Michael Filkins, Mark Riley, Kurt Schooley, Jake Smith, and Trevor Lotz. Hey, thanks to those guys for coming out on a Friday night. It is getting tougher and tougher mm -hmm. for the state of Ohio to get officials. We've seen more games getting moved to Thursday because of the lack of officials. Hey, folks, treat those guys right and get interested. If you love football, Get, get arrested, become an official, help the program out, help everybody in high school football because That's we right. need those guys in the black and white. So Liberty Benton won the toss. They said they wanted the football first. So Columbus Grove will be kicking it to the Eagles. For those of you who might be unfamiliar with these teams, Liberty Benton in the blue. They'll be going from right to left across your screen. Grove in the white with the black numerals going from left to right. Yeah, I like the decision by Liberty Benton. You'll be going into the sun early in the game because most most receivers are going to be facing your quarterback catching the football. So the sun's going to be a factor early until the sun sets. From what I understand, Randy, if I remember correctly, the science class, as the night progresses, the sun will continue to disappear. So I'm told. Towards the west as well, I believe. I like it. Final moments going on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Shep Hawker has the ball teed up, and it looks like we are just about ready to go here from Eagle Stadium. Right, just as you say that, the ball falls off. There is some wind here tonight. And kind of swirling in the windows open the press box, kind of swirling around. It looks like we will be okay. Tee it up a second time. If it stays up, we'll be good to go. Good crowd beginning to fill in here. It's first ever meeting. First man through kind of slipped and fell on the return. And this is going to come out just shy of the 20 yard line. Yeah, as Mason Mod, who looked like he was going to settle under it, and his foot gave out from under him. Couldn't get his footing. Sometimes nerves, you know, it has a big game feel to it tonight. Sometimes you get yourself a little too worked up. A terrible starting position for Liberty Benton. Yeah, it was Lincoln Garlock who ended up having to get this in. They'll start the Eagles will from their own 17. See that shotgun coming out in a three-receiver set. Man will go in motion. 
Darlock to lefty, quickly gets rid of the football. It's going to come out to his brother Lincoln. Cuts up middle of the field, and it looks like he'll be near the 20 for a short game. Like, tough to run the quick screen into the boundary, the short side of the field. Rand trips into it. You're going to see a no huddle attack. They will get the signal from the sideline. They'll take a look at their wristbands. And they'll get ready to go. They will use tempo, and sometimes they'll slow it down as well. So gaining two of the pass plays. He's going to bring up second and eight from the 19-yard line. And we'll get that quick pitch. Getting out to Lincoln Garlock once again, trying to stretch the outside. Columbus Grove knew it was coming and held them once again to a minimal game. Yeah, great job by Lawson Mag right there. Seems to put two guys and turn it back into his linebackers. That's going to make Andy Schaefer very excited. They're looking for big things tonight out of the defensive end and Mag. It's a replace tonight brought to you by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. It's a game of one on the run. It's going to bring up a third and seven now. From the 20-yard line, empty backfield for Garlock. The clap. Fires middle of the field. This one's going to be deflected and incomplete. And who else but your man out there patrolling the middle of the field? Now don't get cooked, right? Watch the ability of Tag Cook to drop. Kind of a Tampa 2 technique. Too high safety. And they're gonna, who's going to play the middle of the field? It doesn't matter because the big fella with the long reach can get it done. Very fortunate for Liberty Benton that that ball didn't get intercepted after the deflection. So fourth and seven and the punt team coming onto the field for the Eagles. We're not going to see many players this year that are better two-way players than Tag Cook. A great left tackle, great inside linebacker. Punt stepped in at the five-yard line, end over end, hits just past midfield. Does take a bit of an eagle roll. Looks like it was going to kind of stick before eventually getting downed at about the 41 yard line. And that is where we will see Columbus Grove take over the first time tonight. 10-31 left to go. Our opening He's quarter on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. It'll be interesting to see where exactly Liberty Benton decides to align Devin Multibine, number 75, the big defensive tackle for them. Sometimes you have guys that are really good like that and you want to move them around, get a good matchup. Remember years ago, the Buffalo Bills used to do that stuff with Bruce Smith. Rams do it a little bit with Aaron Donald as well. Good field position for the Bulldogs from their own 41 initial possession of the night for the visiting team. And keep an eye, number seven, A.J. Schaefer. He's going to be the lead blocker as they go to Trenton Barraza. Barraza trying to break to the outside. He's going to have a Dale's Concrete first down as he steps out of bounds in Liberty Benton territory. Yeah, Schaefer plays that fullback, H-back, tight end combination guy. He leads the block, but not much blocking there. This shows you how special Trenton Barraza can be. This outruns everybody to the sideline. You know, the officials back up. They actually marked him down at the 49. So a we'll gain of eight. It looked like he turned the corner. So well, premature on the first first down of the night. It's going to be second and two from the Bulldogs back on their own side of the field. Looking to throw is Renner. And this one is going to be intercepted. Now, yeah, ball that Renner's going to wish he had back. Last week, he used his feet a couple times to pick up third downs. Looked like he was going to do the exact same thing, but throws it late, just can't get enough on it. Has Halker on a post, but the ball kind of flutters out of his hands. Trying to see the number who came up with it. Is that number 20? 28. 28 that gets the interception. That's uh, Anderson Roberts. Great big play and a huge turn of events in this football game early. So after forcing four turn or four interceptions a week ago, Eagles get another one there. Still 10-16 to go in our opening quarter. And a first down play. A dangerous throw indeed. Schrader almost had another pick six. Almost got the big left hand on and he would have been strutting and profiling into the end zone. Picks up four there. It's going to bring up a second and six from the 32. Here's that empty look. Trips to the right, twins to the left, spreading the field out. See Cook trying to jump the snap. Quickly jumps up field. Now we got a flag coming in here as the pass was complete to Lincoln Garlock. Had a great call on against a backer blitz. Tunnel screen. If they could have combined on it in rhythm, that would have been a big play. 
Penalty is a hold. Looks like that will back up the Eagles here. I think you take the penalty, or do you make a third? Egg? They're going to say no. Let's go ahead and keep it third down. Decline it. So, yeah. kind of a uh, tough situation to make that decision. A third and seven is makeable for Liberty Benton. Four receivers to the left hand side. As opposed, I suppose, to give them an extra down to go second and about 17 18. Some nice gamesmanship going on on both sides. Columbus Grove looking as if they're going to bring blitz and then bailing out at the last second. Andy Cole's got his guys ready to go. Garlock gets the snap, takes off and run, and he's going to be tracked down from behind. Coming up with a big stop, Lawson Mag. Second time in this game, Lawson Mag has come up big. He's a guy that had a long conversation with Andy Schaefer about picking up his pace defensively. How about that senior running him down from the backhand side? Defensive end, when you look at him, you say, that guy can play. Yes, he can. Loss of three. And it's going to be fourth and nine. Back inside the 30-yard line where the punt team will come back on again for the Eagles. So two, three and outs. High punt. This one's going to sail. Braza backing up. He's going to hit the turf. He'll field this one near the 20. Trying to come all the way across the field. He's going to have nowhere to go. And the Bulldogs of Columbus Grove will be pinned in deep. A.J. Schaefer ran into the punter, but the officials are going to say that he was blocked into him. Liberty Benton was saying that should be a flag. White had to say, no, sir. He was blocked into him. Second week in a row we've seen that. What happened to the punter rolling around on the ground after contact was made? That something is disappearing from the game. Well, they need to show how tough they are now. Is that what it is? I like it. Acting class is canceled. Bulldogs will start from their own 16-yard line. Handoff again, trying to break to the outside. Braza, and Braza will get near the 20s. Positive yards on first down. A good thing for Columbus Grove. They're not blocking extremely well early in this game, but the feet of Barraza have been able to stretch some outside runs into positive, positive downs for their offense. Barraza will pick up four. It's going to bring up second and six. And those are the footballs you see right on the 20-yard line. So we were a little quick there that first time. Still looking for our first Dale's Concrete first down of the game. We awarded one, but the officials did not agree with us. Yeah, I don't think the sponsor will be upset with that. Again, trying to go to the outside. A little nifty footwork out of Barraza, cutting back inside. Get to the 25. Looks like he'll be just shy of the first down. Watch A.J. Schaefer, number seven right there. Lock on his guy. Keep his feet moving and get himself a pancake block. Folks, that is impressive. One of those moments where you'll watch it on film tomorrow and you'll run it back two, three times because that is a fantastic block. Good luck with our Finley truck and RV. Instant replay is going to set up a third and one from the 25-yard line. Yeah, kind of a big third down early in this game. You want to keep possession if you're Columbus Grove. We got all the bodies for Liberty Benton up, bare front. Runner gets the shotgun, is one man to hand off to, and the Liberty Benton defense knew it was coming, and they are going to hold up and force fourth down. Yeah, we're going to see, looks like A gap is going to be squeezed in. Gets in the backfield. If you're going to tackle Barraza, you have to gang tackle, and they do that indeed. Tackle made. Looks like number 34, Brady Berkmeyer. Yeah, Berkmeyer's a guy we highlighted in the pregame. The inside linebacker is going to have to have a big night. The lone upperclassman of that linebacking core makes a huge play early in this game. So our loss is going to set up fourth down. And Grove will punt for the first time tonight. Hawker had that one. That one might have been either off of the side of his foot with a little bit of pressure, might have been partially deflected. And we'll see where this one gets spotted at. This is going to be a short punt, and Liberty Benton's going to start in the Columbus Grove side of the field. That was the punt game a week ago that gave new life to Pandora Gilboa. Remember, they had the bad snap for the safety? Only averaged 16 yards every time they punted the football last week, and it looks like they need to keep working on that part of their special teams. Looks like Liberty Benton will start the Columbus Grove 43. So a 19 yard punt. 
set up good field position. Hand off here on first down, just nowhere to go as that Columbus Grove front read that one. Yeah, Kyle Lathrop gets the penetration, funnels it back to the rest of his guys. Tag Cook again. Boy, how many times have we said his name already early in this football game? That Cade folds the carry there for no gain. It's going to bring up second and ten. Yeah, first time tonight, Liberty Benton showed a two-back set. Tried to run the football, and you see on second down, they're going back to their empty look. Garlock gets the snap, looks to throw. Long throw. This one is going to overshoot everyone and head out of bounds incomplete. Yeah, it's a good thing it was incomplete because Antonio Gray did a good job of playing the route. One of the themes that they talked about at Columbus Grove this week was keeping everything in front of them and keeping your zone discipline. Don't keep your eyes off the quarterback because they know Garlic's one of those guys that can look one way and then come back late and throw the other direction. So third and ten coming up here. Now Columbus Grove late identifying the formation. See four receivers to the near side. Single receiver high up top. They really have Columbus Grove outnumbered on this side. Get the quick out, trying to get it into space. This pass comes out to the near sideline. Now Columbus Grove is going to get uh, a lot of time to tell the official there's a hole because they're going to see it right there and there. Double hole, creative blocking going on on the perimeter. Larry Benton is going to go for it on fourth down and short. Pass caught by Seth Elkert. And it's going to bring up a fourth. Looks like fourth and about one from the 34-yard line. Might be just trying to draw him. And we saw do we heard, I guess, do a little with a 42-yard field goal a week ago. From here, it would be about uh, close to 50. As Liberty Benton unsuccessful to draw Columbus Grove offside, so they'll take a timeout or timeout sponsor. Northwest Ohio Recycling, Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392 or visit us online. We'll take a break as well. Big fourth down coming up for you right after this. Big fourth down play coming up here, given to the first man through in the I formation. Miles, this is going to be close. Columbus Grove defense knew it was coming. That front held it pretty solid. Liberty Benton didn't need much, but boy, I don't know. Uh, officials, I think, are going to signal it, give them the, the benefit of the doubt. It was a second effort, though, that got it. The penetration blew it up in the backfield. Just kept turning. Joe Fulham just got enough. Good call, though, by Liberty Benton to go for it. Kind of no man's land right there. So officially our first Dale's Concrete first down of the evening calls Dale's Concrete and decorative stamping and lipstick for all of your commercial and residential Concrete needs. Fresh set of downs for the Eagles. First and 10 from the Columbus Grove, 33. Let's move to a four receiver set of a back to the right. Garlock, they'll run the option. Pitch will go to him in Fultz. Fultz trying to turn the corner, and he's going to get some positive yardage because he's going to get inside the 25. Now, quarterbacks like this, but they hate it because it's an easy read. Defensive end comes at you, make the pitch, but you know what? You're going to pay the price. Garlock's going to get hammered by Mag right there. But it's easy peasy out on the corner because there's nobody there. Schrader was playing too far inside for Columbus Grove. Gain of nine on the run is going to bring up second and one from the 24 yard line. We're rolling under five to go in our opening quarter. On our Hawker drywall scoreboard, quick pass. And immediately receiver is hit. Is coming out to Lincoln Garlock, it looks like. Yeah, Link's going to get lit up, lit up right here by Gray. Antonio Gray, number 13, beats the block and comes and puts a shoulder pad right on the thigh. Remember, their, their big plan was to come up and pop the bubble. So far, Columbus Grove is getting that done. Quick snap on third and two. As officials are going to look at this one. As trying to get the, the Columbus Grove defense before they are set. I like the philosophy behind it, but it's going to be another big fourth down. You kick the field goal here, or you go ahead and go for it on fourth down. They're going to bring the chains out here. As they needed. All right, I'm, I'm 0 for 1 this year. Remember last week I guessed incorrectly. I'm going to say they've 
They're going to be a little bit short. What are you going to guess? They needed the 23. The ball looks like it's in the middle. I think they got it by about half a football. Like I said, they got it. Two for two now. It's Dale's concrete first down for the Eagles, just as Miles Halliday predicted. I'm going to start guessing second, because you've guessed second, and you've got it right twice already this year. It's easy. You should do the opposite of what Miles says. <laughs> You'll be right every time. I got a whole list of schools that knows that, and this is Days is their coach. <laughs> First and 10 from the 23, Garlock, quick throw. Coming out again to the near sideline. Pass is complete, receiver wrestled out of bounds. Try to take a look at the number. And number four caught that one. That's gonna be Link Garlock again. How about the hustle of A.J. Schaefer coming out, getting involved on the hit, and Gray Antonio Gray, number 13. He's showing out early in this game, playing corner. Gain of four is going to bring up second and six now as Liberty Benton gets inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. Garlock with a back to his left in the shotgun. Handoff to him, Fultz trying to break to the outside. He's going to have a man trailing him the entire way and a nice stop made there. I believe that was Mitchell Ellerbrock coming up making the stop. Now uh, it's actually Barraza coming up from the safety position. Recognize those quick feet. Boy, <laughs> that's, a, that's sensational play by a sophomore. Playing safety, making a play at the line of scrimmage. So this is a gain of two. It's a third and four coming up here from the 17 yard line. Oh, you gotta believe it's four down territory again, right? Oh yeah. Garlock gets the snap. Tries to go for it, gets out of one tackle, but he's not gonna get out of his second as he takes a big lick. That <laughs> was like shark week for a second there, wasn't it? Garlic doing everything he can. Look at the competitive nature, getting out of two tackles. Fantastic effort, but then the big great white is just going to come out of the deep and swallow him whole right there. Fourth down coming up, and it does look like they're going to go for the field goal. And no gain on the play. Fourth and four from the 17. So it looks like Case and Doolittle on to attempt what would be about a 34. Four-yard field goal, I do believe. Well, he definitely has the leg from this distance. Hit from 42, steps into this one. Field goal is up, and the field goal is good. So, Eagles of Liberty Benton on the board with the field goal. And on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard, it's 3-0 Liberty Benton. We'll step aside here in WOSN. Oh, we saw the uh, leg of uh, Case and Doolittle on display there, Miles. Again, said that they had a 42-yard field goal a week ago. Win over Lipsick, was able to knock through a 34-yarder here. Late in our opening quarter, it's the Eagles in the early 3-0 lead. Yeah, he had enough leg on that. I think it would have been good for him about another 20 yards. He really drove that ball. One of those drives where both teams feel good, right? Liberty Benton comes away with three points. Feel good about that, but... Columbus Grove feels pretty good too because of starting position and two fourth down conversions on that drive. They're able to stop them from getting a touchdown. Good effort to keep them out of the end zone. Doolittle's got the ball teed up at the 40 yard line. Step into this one, high kickoff. One will be fielded near the five yard line. And trying to get a little bit of room up to near the 25. And decent field position as Barraza will return that one for Columbus Grove. Yeah, tremendous coverage. You see all the blue jerseys keeping Barraza hemmed in. That's some good special teams. You got to be excited if you're Liberty Benton. You had all 11 guys running down. One will be spotted right at the 25 yard line. Pistol formation here. Three receivers for the Bulldogs. They'll run out of this one on first down again, trying to break their speedster free. As Brazo will get out to about the 29 yard line on first down. Now Liberty Benton knows that Columbus Grove is a big power run team. So what are they doing? Well, they're, they're loading the box up. Putting five guys down, playing kind of two linebackers. And morphed the 4-3 into a, almost a five look. And so far, this Columbus Grove offensive line has not been able to solve that riddle on the inside. Second and six. Back to that same set with the uh, H back. It's going to be Schaefer. He's going to turn into the lead blocker. Bronson trying to cut up field. 
He's going to have a Dales concrete first down as he gets out near the 40-yard line. Well, back to the 4-3 that time. Zach Elker's going to try and hem it back in, but watch Schaefer. A little creative blocking on the outside as well. He has the arms extended. Usually that's a clear sign that hopefully you don't call it, Mr. Official. But they're letting him play on the perimeter. Remember early in this game, Liberty Benton had a couple creative blocks on the edge as well. So the official is going to let him play tonight. So there's a Dales concrete first down for Columbus Grove as the Bulldogs get out to the 40-yard line. See that H-back this time line up to the left side as they go back now. Schaefer will come in motion. Renner gets the snap. He's going to fire this one. Lofts this one downfield, and it's going to be incomplete. And Mag had, had it for a touchdown. Watch the seam route right here. Renner's just going to throw it over the outside shoulder. Tough catch for Mag. Gets it on the inside shoulder. He's celebrating in the end zone. Tough to go over top and get it the left hand involved. Couldn't come up with it. It would have been a huge play for Columbus Grove. Yeah, we want to thank our instant replay sponsor, Finley Truck and RV. See them uh, for complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Yeah, Liberty Benton's gone back to that 4-3 look. The last two downs. Let's see what they give Columbus Grove on a big second down. Second and 10 from the 40. I formation, we saw this. I don't know if it was a bad snap or this was designed to go with Brenner. And he's going to be held up after about a yard. It could have been the old goose and go. If you have A gaps open, your quarterback has the option just to get the quick snap and follow his center and guards right up the middle through A gap, get those free yards. But not exactly what they wanted for the outcome. Huge third down in front of Columbus Grove right now. Third and nine. Bulldogs have it at their own 41 yard line. Just under a minute left showing. Opening quarter in our Hawker drywall scoreboard. Yeah, another new look, a kind of a 3-4 look. Scott Arnold, the defensive coordinator, Liberty Benton, doing everything he can to confuse Columbus Grove. He's going to go with the three-man rush. This one's kind of flipped out as Renner tried to run his receiver open, trying to hit Lawson Meg on that far sideline. Yeah, second time it looked like Renner's going to take off and get the third down with his feet. A little bit of a dump Ben Roethlisberger style throw over top. Can't connect with Mag or else it would have been a first down. Check that Zach Reynolds, number six, the intended receiver there. So fourth down after the incomplete pass. It looks like the Bulldogs set to punt once again. It is tough to tell numbers tonight with that sun in our face, isn't it? Especially Liberty Benton with those great numbers on the blue jerseys. Great jerseys, but with that sun in our eyes, it's tough to see. So thankful they got the number on one side of the helmet. Put on about the 23 yard line. Good return coming up middle of the field for Lincoln Garlock. He's going to get this one out just shy of the 40-yard line. Well, first thing you have to do as a punt returner is catch the ball. Second one is make the first guy miss, and he does that. And because of that ability, he's able to stretch this return for 10 more yards. That great field position because of the effort of Link Garlock. They'll start their own 39 here. 18 seconds left to go in our opening quarter. It's been a fun first quarter, hasn't it? We've seen a lot of possessions, a lot of different looks. The gamesmanship between the two coaches, really coaching them up, working hard. This will already be the fourth drive of the evening for the Eagles, and it's a good start. Get it out to the outside to Mason Maud, who looks like he'll get good yardage. Yeah, second time they run that little speed open option. If the quarterback's going to run it at you, you have to thump him, force a bad pitch, or at least make him pay for running it. Kyle Lathrop that time tried to play in between. Go ahead and thump the quarterback because you're not going to catch the pitch once you let it go. And that's how the first quarter will end. So 3 nothing, Liberty Benton after one. We'll come back here on WOSN. A good opening quarter of football here from Eagle Stadium in Liberty Benton where the host Eagles have a 3 nothing lead over Columbus Grove. Kind of thought it was going to be entertaining. It's been that way so far. Both teams wanted to work a little bit on defense, and I believe we got that through quarter miles. Uh, I think the turnover, the quarterback interception runner hanging up the post when he's trying to hit the post with Shep Halker turned this football game around. Looked like Columbus Grove was going to start moving the football, get themselves in great position, and the turnover occurred, and Liberty Benton's been able to take advantage of it since. Shane Gang, you also have to like that when the quarter break comes right near midfield. You're not sprinting down to the other end of the field. <laughs> Just go about 10 yards and ready to go again. 
Second short coming up here for the hosts as we begin quarter number two. And we'll get a quick pass out to the near sideline once again. Getting it out to Lincoln Garlock and it looks like it's gonna be another Dales Concrete first down. A flag. This one might be coming back. Right at the line of scrimmage. I'm wondering if they're gonna get a legal man downfield because there's an RPO action. Officials are kind of buttoning that up a little bit this year. You can't get too far upfield. Liberty Benton moving backwards. They, they're assuming that's against them. The officials still meeting. So tough to be a linebacker in today's game with all the RPO action that goes on. You want to fly up because you think it's going to be a hand up, but you have responsibility in the pass game as well. And we're going to have penalty coming on the Grove here. That's one thing that Columbus Grove wants to sure up. Ten penalties a week ago. Coach Schaefer thought it was one of the reasons that Pandora Gilboa was able to kind of stay in the game. It'll be tough to beat Liberty Benton tonight if you're going to give free yardage like they did the week ago. See there at the top of your screen, right at the 50-yard line, Coach Schaefer getting an explanation from a couple of the officials. Can't say he's going to agree with it. So we're going to move the ball. Well, that's a big was, one. It was the end of the play was the 44, and then they're going to walk off the 15 from there. So the, the pass play itself... You've got nine, and then you tack on 15 more. It's going to be a first down at the Columbus Grove 29-yard line. Garlock fires this one, has a man cutting across the middle. Pass is complete to Mason Mod. Mod then is going to take a big hit. Easy read for Garlock. He's just going to see Mod dragging across the field. Linebackers drop too far. Easy pitch and catch, but they're going to come up and thump you. Gain of about six. We'll tell you that our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Columbus Grove and Liberty Bend is the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio. Skilled objective and caring financial planner. Second down run coming here to the near side. Another big hit applied. As Columbus Grove bringing some of the uh, some of the big hitters. Zach Reynolds getting involved with a stop there. But it looks like the Eagles are going to pick up another Dales Concrete first down. And credit Scott Garlic who calls the plays and he's the head football coach here. That is a run play that has worked, so don't forget about it. Go back to it again. Columbus Grove going to have to figure out how to stop that option game. Inside the red zone once again is Liberty Benton. First and 10th, Columbus Grove, 18-yard line. Cam Garlock in the shotgun. There's five receivers to work from. It's the high snap. He's going to take off and run through the first wave, and he's going to fall forward inside the 10. Now you saw them adjust the formation just a little bit, widen it out, because this is going to be quarterback run all the way. You let the four guys run up field, quarter, your linebacker drops. Huge seam for Garlock, great athlete. Use that ability one-on-one, -on -one, five on four in the middle of the field, take the free yards. It's Ten yards on the run is going to bring up a first and goal from the eight, another Dales Concrete first down. Handoff here on first and goal. Trying to fight for the end zone. Balls we have flags out. coming out. Markers coming out. More markers and flags. Scrum, a melee. I think Liberty Benton came up with it. Every official threw their marker. We're going to take a look at the Finley Truck and RV replay. This looks like it's going to be a touchdown right away once he gets to the perimeter. Right there, and then there's going to be a hit by Halker, I believe. Helmet on the ball, gets it loose. But Johnny on the spot is Jason Doolittle, I believe, that comes up with it. And where it gets back to live action, Mason Mod from the two gets in. However, I believe we have a uh, it's going to be a sideline warning. So the touchdown will stand. So Mason Mod with a two yard touchdown run has extended the score to 9 0 now on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. And now Kaysen Doolittle on to attempt the extra point. A year ago, he was 45 of 58. It's off to a great start again this year. Extra point is on its way, and the extra point 
is good. So seven play drive ends with a touchdown. Eagles up by 10 over Columbus Grove. Well, Mason Mod with a two yard touchdown run makes it 10 nothing. Liberty Benton with the lead over Columbus Grove. Seven play, 61 yard scoring drive. I think it was the greatest two yard run in the history of high school football. Mason Mod, great job getting in there. You gotta give a lot of credit to Liberty Benton. They are really doing a good job schematically, taking advantage of what uh, Columbus Grove has given them defensively, picking on the perimeter, and defensively, how about the job Scott Arnold has done to kind of confuse Columbus Grove with all the different looks? Liberty Benton set looked like it was a Hawaiian night for the uh, Liberty Benton student section. You look over Columbus Grove, their student section also has lays on as a luau everywhere. It must be. Now with social media, it's easy now to kind of uh, coordinate that. A lot more than it was in uh, your or my day. Good return by Trent Barraza. Barraza just one man to beat, and he's going to be taken out of bounds not before he gets into Liberty Benton territory. Just the spark the Bulldogs needed. And you're going to see the double kick out right there on the top side. Tremendous block by Antonio Gray also. And Barraza is going to be one-on-one -on -one with the kicker, but that's not just any kicker. That's Kaysen Doolittle, number 45, who delivers a thump. But they needed a big play in a worse way. Barraza was giving it to him all year long, comes up with another one. So Grove will start at the Liberty Benton 40-yard line. Yeah, you don't have many kickers there, 6'2", 175, that wear linebacker pads, right? No. Too little delivered a thump. Runner in a shotgun, has a back with him. An awkward handoff and a long turnaround. Trying to get to the outside once again is Barraza. Yeah, Barraza might be a sophomore, but he's got himself a NFL caliber stiff arm. Doesn't he? One, get off me, son. He's going to get another one right here. Use that stiff arm right away. Get off me again. He throws him down to the ground like he's Najee Harris for the Steelers. Impressive stuff. Game of seven on the run is going to bring him second and three from the 33-yard line. A tremendous block as well by Ted Cook, number 50. Drove his man about 10 yards upfield. Split receiver each way out of the shotgun look. Now Columbus Grove looks quite sure what to do there. That's a blown play. I think they, everybody up front thought it was going to be speed option. Renner says, no, we're going to run speed option fake, go vertical, but tough to do with all the defensive lines on your, defensive linemen on your backs. Columbus Grove now lost all the yardage they gained on first down, so it's going to bring up a third and 10. The free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or Android Play Store. You just get the feeling that Columbus Grove has got to come up with some kind of points on this drive here. This is four down territory, Miles. Depends what happens here on third down. They're trying to get some positive yards. Renner looking to throw. Fires has a man open, and that one's going to be broken up. Looked like it was into the hands momentarily of Shep Helker, but then ripped away. Zach Elkert, I believe, is going to make the play. Good pickup by Barraza on the blitz. Really good throw by Renner. Hulker's going to have the first down. I think takes his eyes off at the last second. Tremendous defensive play, but it does look like it's fourth down. They're going to go. I believe it was Anderson Roberts, 28, oh, breaks 20, that okay. one up. So fourth and 10 here for Columbus Grove, and it looks like they're going to keep their offense on the field, down 10 nothing. Now he's going to punt a backed up. And they do get the quick kick. This one's going to hit, and... We'll take a sideways bounce and we'll be down at the five yard line. Well, heck, Renner might be the punter for the rest of the year. That's the best punt they've had all season long. So deep in the Liberty Benton territory here, you see 805 left to go before we get to halftime on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, 
commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. Well, how big was that play by Anderson Roberts on that third down? Knocked it out of the hands of Hulker. Forced up the punt. First down from the six. Simple handoff here on first down. And this can turn into some big yardage. It's going to be Dale's concrete first down as the Eagles need just one play. Get out of the shadow of their own goal line. It's nothing more than inside zone that's going to be over pursued on the back side. Makes one cut, runs away from Tag Cook in the middle of the field. Antonio Gray can't get to him. A pretty good speed there. Worried about the run game. Nothing to worry about tonight. Fultz will get 27 on the run to get out to the 33-yard line. Yeah, Fultz is a guy that shows he can carry the football. Seven carries, only seven yards last week, but he's up to the task tonight. Going back to the Garlock to Garlock connection. Lincoln using his feet, trying to move forward. He's going to be just shy of the 40. It's going to bring up second and somewhat manageable. At some point in time, Liberty Benton will pump and go. You hit the hitch, you hit the hitch. Every corner in the world gets a little impatient, jumps the hitch a little bit, and go vertical by him on the hitch and go. It's a gain of six is going to bring up second and four. Cook once again trying to jump that uh, snap on the shotgun as they get the quick pitch trying to get to the outside. Mason Mod get out across the 40 to about the 42, and it's going to bring up a third and about one. That's the best that Columbus Grove has played that speed option all night long. They're going to have to start going outside the block on the pitch. A.J. Schaefer went inside, kind of bounced it, and his teammates made the tackle. Third and one coming up here for the Eagles from their own 42-yard line. The too high safety looks like a Schaefer fainting that he's going to blitz on the outside of the top side. Trying to cheat up as well. Third down run is going to be met for a loss. Tremendous call by Andy Coles, the defense coordinator for Columbus Grove. Brings Schrader on the blitz. You're going to see him bottom side, number 14, is going to split it right there. They try to reach him. That's a fantastic open field tackle to force a fourth down. Big third down and off the field for Columbus Grove. Punt team out on the field for Liberty Benton as you take a look. At that replay, the inner instant replay is brought to you by Finley Truck and RV. Your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Fourth down, punt unit on. Schaefer nearly had the double hand block on that one. Yeah, King Close, I think if he puts his hands in front, he gets the block. Hands were high in the air like he was Superman, went over top. Usually teach cross the thumbs. And cross the thumbs. Get the hands out in front of you, you're going to get the block. But if you raise them above your he head, it's going to be tough. You kind of create a path for the punter to run through. Columbus Crow will get this one thrown. 32, exactly halfway through this second quarter. Thank everyone uh, joining us live tonight here on WOSN. Don't forget to switch over to uh, TV44, WTLW, the Sports Report, live tonight at 10 o'clock. How about that home side crowd? I don't think there's an empty seat. Expect big things out of Liberty Benton. It's a quick pitch on first down going to Braza. Braza's going to follow his blockers. He'll get out to about the 35. Yeah, right guard uh, Loudon Ashamudi gets out in front, gets a block for him. See Ashamudi getting on his man and driving him to the ground. As a for former pulling guard, I, I can appreciate that. Nice job, Ash Moody. Gain of three on the run is going to bring up second and seven. Grove might try to do everything they can to make this the last drive of the half. Score some points, run off five minutes. Like how many blue jerseys are within the tackle box? Safeties are down at about six yards. Dared Grove to run, which they do, going again to the outside. Back to Barraza, who's going to get into Liberty Mountain territory, come up with a Dales Concrete first down. Now Lawson Mag, number eight on the outside, is going to chip just to get a little bit of a seam for Barraza, and then he's going to get himself a pancake block right there to the ground, freeze Barraza for, for more yards. That's where they've done their best damage, getting Barraza on the perimeter. Whatever Coach Schaefer said to Lawson Mag this week, say it every single week because he is playing 
at a high level tonight. 22 yards on the run, sets up first down from the Liberty Baton 43. See the clock stopped momentarily, 5.09 to go on our Hawker drywall scoreboard. Renner gets the snap, going back to the well, Braza. Uh, Liberty Benton reads this one. Brazza runs into about four blue jerseys. Yeah, Mason Maud meets him in the backfield after one of his teammates spills him outside. Try to run a down and counter scheme, but too many blue jerseys in the backfield. You see Maud get there. Braz got to have to do a better job of covering up that football. See how loose it was on the contact. Liberty Benton can punch that out. Loss of four sets up a second and 14. Back to Liberty Benton, 47 yard line. Every time Columbus Grove looks like they're moving the football, Liberty Benton comes up with a big play defensively. This time Renner will fake the handoff, has a man open in the flat. Nice job hanging onto it. As AJ Shaver is falling down, we take a look at the Finley Truck and RV replay. Yeah, Barraza I think blows the play. He's supposed to get a fake look. Doesn't attack Renner like he should. Kind of throws the whole play off, but A.J. Schaefer, ability right there, juggling the football as he falls to the ground. Turf Monster got him, but he's still able to make the catch. Back to the original line of scrimmage, so third and 10 coming up here for the Bulldogs. Kind of a new formation, trips to the left. Schaefer, one of those receivers. Want to throw that way, instead they'll swing it out Barraza. Barraza able to cut up field. He's going to have a first down, gets into the open space. He's to the 20, and he's going to be taken down inside the 10. Now I think we're going to have our first hold of the night. Called it about the 39. I think they're going to say it's A.J. Schaefer that commits it. This is a tremendously well-schemed play. Going to run the screen to this side. And they had one-on-one -on -one blocking on the perimeter, and Call a hold right there, and we've seen a lot worse. That is a huge call in this football game because it looked like Columbus Grove would be cooking inside the 10. So big penalty is going to back up Columbus Grove. Yeah, really about a 40-yard penalty when you take into account of the, the end of the play. So. This is a Columbus Grove offense that does not have a lot of third and 16 Third and 17 plays on their play card. They're also going to get Columbus Grove with a sideline warning as well. Add insult to injury while you're at Hey, since we're penalizing you for other stuff, just uh, chill it out over there. It is really tough. It really is on that sideline to make sure everybody stays back behind the line. It just It's like a magnet. Everybody wants to move closer to the field all the time, and you're thinking about the game, not where your feet are. So now third and 16 coming up here for Columbus Grove from the Liberty Benton 49. He'll fire this one. He's going to be waiting for a signal from some of the officials. That one kind of short hop the intended target. Hulker was open. Kind of one hop to 50 cents a hop. Not enough for a first down. No doubt about it, you punt the football here. Liberty Benton does have two timeouts with 324 left. Special teams unit coming back out for Columbus Grove. So Mitchell, Mitchell Ellerbrock will do the punting, stands inside his 40. Unload this one, takes a hop, and once again will roll inside the 20. As Liberty Benton will be pinned down there, 3.15 to go before halftime. The first, first thing you want to do on this drive here, Liberty Benton, right, is take care of the football. The first two plays of this drive are going to determine how aggressive you're going to be from here. If you don't get big yardage on first and second down, you know, if the clock is at your advantage, go ahead and let it roll because you're up by 10 points. Don't do anything to put it in a precarious position for Columbus Grove, then get it and cash it in right before the half. Eagles will start at their own 16. As we heard Miles say, we'll see what they elect to do here. In the NFL, what you do is you call a draw. And you get some positive yards on the draw, and then you go from there. They'll flare it out here to the near sideline. That is going to be read by Columbus Grove. Yeah, watch Mitch Ellerbrock right here. Number nine. 
He is going to beat the block outside. He's going to come deliver a thump. Remember, let them catch the bubble. You're going to pop the bubble. Job one tonight for Columbus Grove defensively. Bulldogs are biting on that play. Seth Elkert took a big hit there. No gain on the play. Second and 10 from the 16. Garlock still in the shotgun, gets the snap. Threw for 333 yards and a win last week against Lipsick. Has a man open middle of the field. And a good job fighting forward for Dale's concrete first down at the end of the play. Second time they've run this concept, just running the under route. Let the linebackers drop as far as they want. Catch the under and then run by the linebackers. You see Schrader and Cook trying to catch up. Caden Fultz with it, the 13 yard reception. And it looks like before the next play, we'll have a timeout. And again, our timeouts tonight brought to you by Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419 384 3392 or visit us online. 2.25 to go before halftime. Liberty Benton trying to add on to the lead, and we'll be right back. So Liberty Benton. Able to get one first down, 10 nothing. Eagles lead the uh, Columbus Grove Bulldogs here as we close in on the final two and a half minutes before halftime. I want to tell you that our title sponsor for our game tonight between Columbus Grove and Liberty Benton is the State Bank. Invest in the Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Well, you said Northwest Recycling. I bet their favorite player ever in Major League Baseball, Phil Garner. Scrap iron. Phil Garner. <laughs> okay. We are family. 79 Pirates, second baseman. Talking about players played before I was born. Just trying to get our sponsor another plug. Here's a pass. Halfback pass out of the timeout, and a pass is going to be caught. Hawker is going to hit the receiver so hard he's going to lose his helmet. As Doolittle a little shaken up as he hangs onto that one. Yeah, tremendous play coming out of a timeout. Defenses aren't really paying attention. Doolittle, what a catch. That's Mason Mott on the throw, and how about the hit right there? Ooh. Well, they like to play physical at Columbus Grove. Shep Hulker definitely delivers a hit, but Doolittle does a lot on that catch. 26 yards on the pass play, sets up a Dales Concrete first down. Cam Garlock looking to run, nowhere to go. He's going to lose about a yard as he's going to fall down. Back of the 46, going to bring up second and 11. Now Dylan Bryan, he is a strong dude. I'm not sure what he can bench, but he benches enough to use the one arm to get Garlic down to the ground. Good job playing defensive tackle one-on-one -on -one with a quarterback, gets him to the ground. Eagles beginning to move with just a little bit of urgency here as they're in the plus side of the field. Want to tell you that at halftime, stick around. We'll have uh, coverage of both the uh, Columbus Grove and Liberty Benton bands. Before we get to that, it looks like the Eagles are going to use what I believe is their third and final timeout. And again, our timeouts tonight brought to you by Northwest Ohio Recycling. Now they're going to say the last timeout before this one was called by Columbus Grove. Oh, so Liberty okay. Benton does have one left. Called the timeout there because they didn't like how they were setting up the formation. Play clock was drifting down, so go ahead and use it. You can't ever waste timeouts in the first half. Second half you can. First half, though, you can. And again, our timeout sponsor, Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392 or visit us online. Also check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN. TV. Or you can do what I'm about to do. Miles Holiday, where are we at next Friday? Oh, we are at Crestview, aren't Here we? Here we go. Wayne Trace at Crestview. Or if you just see Miles in the street, just ask him and he'll tell you. He's more than happy to talk to you. Second 11 coming up here after the timeout. Nice seam play, hitting a man in stride, middle of the field. Garlock's going to find, I believe that was Braden Wages, number one, makes the catch. Yeah, kind of three yards. You make the outside linebacker stretch to cover the flat. And then go right up the seam on a little bit of a delay. One-on-one -on -one with Cook. Cook couldn't get there in time. 15 yards. It's another Dales Concrete first down at the 31-yard line. And off here is to Mason Mod. Mod's going to get out of one tackle looking for the corner. Still on his feet down the far sideline. He's going to be inside the five. Kind of caught that Columbus Grove defense napping. Not really set. They snap it too quick. Running that down concept zone block. How about the block out top? 
by Link Garlic getting it done to set Mod free. This would be a huge touchdown in this football game. First and goal from the four. Mod's going to carry it in from there before he gets his second touchdown of the night. Oh, impressive drive indeed by Liberty Benton. Run the exact same play inside, down everybody in, let the defense fly upfield, bounce it back to B gap for an easy touchdown. That might just break this game open. So now 16-0 in our Hawker drywall scoreboard. Doolittle seems to be okay after taking that big hit on that halfback pass. Comes in and just very easily and nonchalantly knocks through the extra point. So the Eagles 17-0. They lead late in our opening half. How smart was that though? Co coaching and playing, call, play calling by Scott Garlic. You see something you like? Go back to it right away. Don't let the defense get snap, get set and snap it quick. Boy, that was an impressive drive and might be enough to start putting this game away. It's Columbus Grove struggling on the offensive end. So Mason Mott with the second touchdown run of the evening. Makes it 17-0 in our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us, hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. We have several candidates for our player of the game. The dynamic dude at the end of this one. A lot of guys in blue jerseys kind of putting her hand in the air saying, hey, I want to be the player of the game. Nice little uh, memento to go home as well. Maybe we can get a shot of that before we get to our end of our night. Now, 112 left. Liberty Benton one timeout, Columbus Grove with uh, two timeouts left. But I believe Andy Schaefer is going to want to kind of just go in at halftime and talk things over. High squib kick. This one's going to be fielded at the 25-yard line. That's Jamison Raider, the sophomore, goes back and catch a tough catch. Nicely done by 31, or else it would have been another possession for Liberty Benton. So with a minute, eight left to go before halftime. We'll see what the, the Bulldogs, by the way, they'll have the football first to begin the second half. See what they try to do from their own 25-yard line. Boy, the sun goes down. You can see those numbers a little better. Yeah, hopefully the second half we'll be able to see them quite a bit. It's been a struggle. I feel kind of bad. Sometimes we can't give the recognition to the Liberty Benton kids that we wanted to because we just couldn't see the number. First down pass is going to come out here to the near sideline. St. Steckshoulder will come up with that one. Yeah, easy pitch and catch. We'll just hitch it up because the secondary is going to play off, let you have those free yards, exchange it for the clock running. Game of seven is going to bring up second and three here. Steckshoulder gets out of bounds and stops the clock with a minute and two to go before halftime. Now maybe completing these short little routes before half will start getting Brenton Renner into some kind of rhythm. Just hasn't looked as if he's been settled in all night long. After that interception on the post route, he was trying to hit Shep Hulker early in the game. And Renner also used his feet in the win last week of Columbus Grove. He's going to flip this one out, just gets rid of it. Out to uh, Landon Schrader. Schrader will have a Dale's Concrete first down as he's out near the 40-yard line. Yeah, they hit it for big yardage early in the game to Barraza to the left-hand side, come back with it. Schrader nifty with the ball in his hands as well. Mark that right at the 40, so gain of eight. The Bulldogs trying to make, come up with something here late again. We'll throw to that sideline. Pass is caught out to Zach Reynolds. Reynolds out of bounds at about the 46-yard line, so bring up second and four. Yeah, Reynolds, a guy had three catches a week ago for about 40 yards. He's one of those guys, when he catches the football, he, he looks like a threat. Might be that big receiver they need moving forward the rest of the year. See there in a the Hawker drywall scoreboard. Clock stop now 50 seconds before halftime. Three receivers this time. The trips formation coming to the near sideline at the bottom of your screen. Renner steps up, trying to fight someone. Instead, he's going to take a big hit right at the line of scrimmage. Playing cover four, so nobody's going to be open because the secondary, all four guys are just dropping into quarter zones. Renner tries to move his feet to buy some time. Well, Braden Wages had a big catch. I guess you on could offense. say Wages made him pay for holding on to the football there. That's going to change what Columbus Grove will do. 
Hawkins. Timeout taken here. And again, our timeouts brought to you by Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora. Paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392 or visit us online. Quick timeout. So it looks like we'll stay here as Columbus Grove already lined up. Didn't need the full. It's like a basketball coach. You take a full timeout and only talk for 20 seconds. <laughs> Sometimes you just call the timeout. The stop the clock you could care less about talking about your kids. I always like when basketball coaches call timeout and they don't say anything. They just stare at their guys in the huddle. Third down, pass play up. Shep Hawker, middle of the field. Hawker's going to get in Liberty Benton territory, so he's going to have another Dales Concrete first down. That'll stop the clock momentarily as they get into the LB side of the field, the 43. Now we'll get it out to the far sideline again. Not sure if the uh, sticks were even set. The official's going quickly. That pass caught out there by Schrader once again. It's out of bounds, stops the clock, 22 seconds to go. Now, folks are probably saying, where's this been all game long? Well, this is a different coverage that Liberty Bent Benton is now playing. They are just playing way far off, letting them catch everything in front. Early in the game, they were playing different coverage. Remember, all the bodies up towards the line of scrimmage, much different. Second and six from the Liberty Benton, 39. Runner looking to throw, open middle of the field once again. Ball's going to come out at the end. And the officials are going to rule that, I believe, a catch. Let's and take a, a fumble, look at it right? here. Curl concept. He's open, turns, makes a football play. It's popped out. That should be a fumble, in my estimation. That was Wages, number one, that fell on top of it. And I'm with you as the receiver kind of turned. Now, did he have full? It was in his hands. Yeah. He, he squared up on the safety, took two steps. Yeah, that's a good call right there. Columbus Grove's not going to like it, but it's the correct call. Good concept. Curl, flat combo. Flat defender vacates, hit the curl. There you go. Ball's on. Yeah, arms on the ball, going to pop it free. Now they'll, they'll ask in the NFL, was it secured? Of course, we'd be back in the command center in New York City looking at that 15 minutes, trying to determine if that was. Is uh, anything more frustrating on a Sunday afternoon? You're watching your favorite team play, and then the next thing you know, it's 15 minutes watching a replay. And I swear, they'll slow the replays down so slow that you're like, I, well, you could tell me either way, and I'll believe it, right? Brings up so uh, much doubt. Does anyone know what a catch is in the NFL? No. I don't know. You're absolutely right. So it looks like. Liberty Benton happy with that 17 nothing lead. They will get the turnover, and it looks like they'll run up the final few seconds. So we will get to halftime here. All Eagles getting a big stop after Columbus Grove drives. 17 nothing. the Eagles lead at the break. We'll have some halftime festivities coming up for you right after this. Watching live high school football, WOSN. 17-0 the score at the half. Liberty Benton with the lead uh, over Columbus Grove. Grove driving there late. Looked like they were trying to make something happen. And then uh, a big fumble recovery by Braden Wade just kind of ended any sort of a threat as the Eagles of Liberty Benton have gotten a couple of uh, short touchdown runs of two and four yards from Mason Mod also got the scoring kicked off as Case and Doolittle hit a 34-yard field goal, and that's where we're at, 17-0. Liberty Benton with the lead here at halftime. We'll step aside here, and so we'll see both bands perform here at the break. You're watching football on WOSN.
please enjoy as we close our performance of Sight Bone and No Time to Die, featuring senior soloists Mason Smith, Josh Miller, and Lola Flick.
17 nothing our score here at the half. The Eagles of the Liberty Benton leading Columbus Grove. The Bulldogs uh, in danger of having their 23 game win streak stamped along with Miles Halliday. I'm Randy Roberts. And, uh, what have you seen so far in that opening half, Miles? You know, impressive stuff on the defensive end by Liberty Benton. This is a Columbus Grove team that loves to win the physical matchup of the trenches. You gotta say the nod is going the way of Liberty Benton. They're doing a good job of stopping that inside run game of Columbus Grove. Now, Barraza has been able to get outside on occasion, but running between the tackles has not been anything that Columbus Grove has been able to do. Credit Scott Arnold, defensive coordinator of Liberty Benton, all kinds of different looks. The linebackers, which we thought were being, gonna be a concern, you know, because the two freshmen that start out of three has not been a problem as the inside linebacker player, Brady Berkmeyers. He's been a standout-ish as a linebacker, number 34, doing a good job. The junior, the only upperclassman of those three, standing forward. Now on the offensive line, Boy, Liberty Benton, they just have made big play when they needed to, right? How many fourth down conversions did they have in the first half? Big third down conversions. The touchdown right before half, huge in this football game. Columbus Grove, without a doubt, has got to score the next touchdown in this football game or else this thing is going to get out of hand. Hey, so there are a title sponsor for our broadcast tonight between Columbus Grove and Liberty Benton is the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Uh, join us uh, following our game tonight. Miles will uh, have an interview with our uh, player of the game, uh, otherwise known as our dynamic dude. The dynamic dude Go of home the with game. a nice little prize here. If we can get a yeah, shot of our... The first one of the year there right there. There we go, our little helmet there. Let's show the, the dynamic dude the on dynamic the back. There you dude. go. So the the comes complete, the American flag. I gotta like that. Good o look, only so. gets the helmet, I'm not included. Yeah, you saw the, the midsection of Miles Holiday there. <laughs> it's a great background. I should have lifted my shirt and showed my six-pack abs off. So what I no, one, done. no one needed to see that. No, nobody. 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 Well, as I put Miles to the test. Uh, next week we'll be live from a Crestview. So the Knights take on Wayne Trace. Yeah, it'll be our first trip to Crestview for a football game. It'll be kind of fun to go to. Wayne Trace struggling a little bit tonight turning over to football, but still got another second half to play. A couple of head scratchers as I uh, perused our WOSN app, check out some halftime scores uh, while we uh, highlighted the bands. Both sounded like they're in mid-season form too. Liberty Benton's band kicked things off with a fantastic Star Spangled Banner tonight. Great rendition. How about that stretch right there. I'm not sure why you need uh, headphones on to stretch a kid. Uh, you think there's a coach up high telling him, no, wiggle the hips more. The quad, focus on the quad. I'm trying to stay loose. I don't know if uh, the weather will play uh, a big factor as it did both our Thursday and Friday games last week. As Miles and I got to see Columbus Grove extend that regular season win streak to 23 with that win uh, over Pandora Gilboa. That was Lincoln Garlic that they were working on there right before we started making fun of the stretch routine. That's a guy you want to make sure he's ready to go. So Columbus Grove will have the football first as we get set to begin our second half. Now they pooch the last kickoff because they don't want to kick it deep to Barraza. They can do the same thing here in between that first and second wave. It's going to be taken by one of the up men near the 40-yard line. And Lawson Mag, who it looked like at first had a chance <laughs> to split the C, go all the way, but started to go laterally instead of vertically. Good job by him, though, catching it first and foremost. Good field position for Columbus Grove to start the second half. They will have it at their own 40 as the sun also made its way down during that halftime break. It feels a little bit more like football weather out there. Yeah, we've kind of been blessed with uh, playable weather the first two weeks. Normally, the first two weeks are just brutal. Hasn't been the case this year. And Miles had to go with the long sleeves, and I'm kind of starting to wish that maybe I had. First down handoff. Braza trying to fight uh, some 
running room there off the tackle. You know, kind of getting back to her, their identity, but you see the great play of Devin Multibine right there for Liberty Benton, the 75. The big fella fights off the block to make the tackle. You know, Columbus Grove went in at halftime and said, look, we're the bullies usually. Let's go at Liberty Benton, establish our inside run game. Gain of three on the run is going to bring up second and seven. Grove goes back to that pistol look. There's the quick pitch. Browser trying to cut up fields, going to run out of one tackle. And he's able to get out to about the 45 before he's brought down from behind. And yeah, Miles Bailey, one of the freshman linebackers, number five, has him dead to rights right there, but his breakdown is too wide. Barraza may, always makes the first guy miss. So Brady Burkmeyer, number 34, one of the players in there. Also, uh, Zach Elkert, number 20, kind of running in. He's going to bring him a third down, as he'll pick up a couple to get to the 45. So third and five coming up here for Columbus Grove and our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Trying to make this work with Trent Barraza. Barraza looks like, as he gets into Liberty Mountain territory, will have a Dale's Concrete first down. Yeah, Kyle Lathrop, number 62, the big left guard. You see him right there. He should be strutting back to the huddle because he had himself a heck of a pull and block the spring for the first down. Great line play right there by Columbus Grove. It's a gain of six when they needed five. It's a first down. Good luck those jerseys by Columbus Grove. It looked like Ohio State jerseys if you were forced to watch Ohio State on a black and white television. <laughs> One of the best helmets in all of Northwest Ohio. Run goes straight ahead, Barraza. He's going to get inside the 45. One well, of the few times they got to kick out the work. Down block on the play side, and then you can bring Schaefer around to kick out. But they don't leave anyone for him to kick out. This kind of leads away. They didn't really scheme it up correctly, but he outnumbered the bodies. But if you're Coach Schaefer, you got to be excited because guys are coming off the football finally moving forward. A good run of five is going to bring up second and five while he's speaking to the helmets. Kind of partial with the rocket on the uh, Pandora Gilboa. Ah, I wonder why. Randy Robs, big Toledo Rocket fan. Brazo once again. They're just going to keep feeding the running back as the 6'1", 175 sophomore will have yet another Dale's Concrete first down. Look at A.J. Schaefer, number seven, lead the way. Gets the kick out block on wages. Blows it up. Down and kick. Down and kick. What they're doing on the offensive line to start the second half, and they found something that they like. Well, it's Ben Brazza for three, for two, for six, for five, for eight. And he's going to get a little bit of a break as Schrader comes in to carry the football. Runner is the back behind him. We'll go with Schrader turning up that right side inside the 35. We'll mark him down. It looks like at about the 33. Much better job by Miles Bailey that time. Playing outside the tackle box because of the formation. Comes back in one-on-one -on -one with Schrader. Gets the upperclassman to the ground, but not before Columbus Grove again. Positive yardage on first down. Second and seven. From the 33s, Grove's already run off about three and a half minutes to the second half clock. Well, this was the T.O.P. that they wanted to have in the first half, right? Time of possession was going to be important. First time tonight that they've really been able to grab it. So Renner's going to keep this himself, trying to find room to the outside. Cuts it back upfield, and he's going to be inside the 20 down near the 15-yard line. He was a huge factor a week ago using his feet. Right here, that's nothing but a kick out by Schrader, a pull around by Schaefer, down blocks inside. Look at the block outside by Reynolds. And Renner using those feet, makes a little cut right back in there or else he would have scored. I think if he would have sprint to the left corner, he might have been able to score. So he picks up 18 on the run. It's a first and 10 from the Liberty Benton 15 yard line. Another first down. First downs tonight brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping in Lipsick. See them for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Right, time going again back to Schrader. Schrader going to run out of one tackler. He's going to get into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, that was a patented Columbus Grove drive, wasn't it? All done on the ground, all done by the guys up front on the line of scrimmage. And they needed a touchdown in the worst way. What do you do? You pull around, you bring Lathrop, you bring Schaefer, and then a stiff arm by Schrader, and a little dipsy-do around the final tackle. 
Huge momentum change in this football game. Schrader gets it done. And Landon Schrader caps off the eight play touchdown drive with a score from 15 yards out. Now uh, Shep Hawker, excuse me, on for the extra point. Hawker's kick is up and the kick is good. 7.33 to play on our Hawker drywall scoreboard. Columbus Grove with the first score of the night. Bulldogs now down 10. Pretty, pretty good drive put together there by Columbus Grove. Eight plays, 60 yards. Takes four minutes, 21 seconds off the clock. Ends with the 15-yard touchdown run by Landon Schrader. Now 17-7. As uh, Miles, you mentioned it, like you, you speak things into existence. <laughs> Miles Damas, if you will. I can look ahead. Can tell you if they need to score or not, and I would say this: every coach says score the football. It's always a good thing when you score the football. Columbus Grove had to get it in the worst way, else this thing would have ran away out of their hands. Speaking of running away, getting it done on the ground, Columbus Grove physical up front. Every play of that scoring drive on the ground, good straight ahead return outside the 30-yard line. It's where. The Eagles of Liberty Benton will take over. Again, Grove coming in a 23-game regular season win streak. As Antonio Gray that ran down, knife through, made the tackle on the kickoff. And this Columbus Grove team is fired up. Got to get a big stop so they can get the ball back to that offense. The Eagles have started their own 28-yard line. You see their Hawker Drywall scoreboard already down 7.27 to go, third quarter. Staying in that 4-3, spreading the backers out. And it is the Eagles of Liberty Benton. We're going to run here on first down. That's Kyle Lathrop, who's having himself a good second half. Had the huge block on that first opening drive, and then He's knifes through, there. makes a play in the backfield along with Tad Cook, who just read the handoff and ran downhill, made the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Caden Fultz with nowhere to go there. Gain of zero brings second and 10 from the 28. Garlock looks to throw down the sideline. Pass first was going to be intercepted. And instead, it goes right into the hands of his brother Lincoln as we take a look at the Finley Truck and RV replay. I don't know if he just threw it too hard for Antonio Gray, but look, it's going to be intercepted. Wow, look at the athletic ability of Link Garlic, though. Doesn't take his eyes off it, catches it. Huge play. We're going to have an offside. It's funny how Hut Hut still works. Draws the defensive lineman off, and that interception would have been absolutely huge, but all of a sudden, now Liberty Benton's cooking on offense. 21 yards on the pass. They're going to add five more on the penalty. And it takes just two plays for Liberty Benton to get into Columbus Grove territory. Following the penalty, they move to the Grove 46. Going back to that almost interception, you wonder if Antonio Gray just kind of took his eye off at the last second, thinking about what he was going to do with the ball in his hands, because it's weird how it went right through. First down, Garlock will keep this one. He'll get inside the 45, about the 44. Well, AJ Schaefer reminds him that I'm number seven and I bring some physicality. Hits number seven on the other side to the ground in a big way. Gain of two is going to bring up second and three after the penalty already. As we see in our Hawker Drywall scoreboard, halfway through this third quarter. Uh, they're stretching Lincoln Garlic out on the home sideline, cramping up. Some doing it at halftime. Four receivers come to the near side. Screen goes the opposite way. Everyone knew it was coming too. Still on his feet, Mason Mod, And Mod's gonna be brought down inside the 30 for another Dales Concrete first down. Now look at the deep drop by the quarterback. They always tell you always tell your defensive lineman, if you see him retreating that much, you better retrace your steps and get back in a hurry. Because there's not many quarterback drops that are about 15, 10, 12 yards deep. That is nothing but screen all the way. Goes for 16 to the 28 yard line. Handoff will go to Fultz. Not a lot of running room there. He'll get a short gain. And all they're doing is letting the defensive end fly upfield, not even blocking them. Quarterback reads it. If he flies up, go ahead and give it. That's a senior quarterback that's been in this system. He knows the right reads. 
Second and eight coming up here after the two yard run. Liberty Benton trying to match that Columbus Grove touchdown to begin our third quarter. Pressure coming as Cook unable to bring down Garlock, but thankfully he's got a teammate right there to finish him off. And that's Kyle Lathrop that finishes him off. Tad Cook comes on the inside backer blitz, just rips right through a gap, has him dead to rights right there, but Garlock, how about his uncanny ability to get away once, can't do it twice as Lathrop lasses him to the ground. Loss of 10. As our instant replays tonight brought to you by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Third and 17 coming here for the Eagles. Garlock in a shotgun. Let's quickly get rid of it. Steps up, can't find it. What's he going to take off? Now he'll run. Penalty flag coming in from the back of the play. It's usually the sign of holding, and that is exactly what it is. That was a timely cut by Garlic because if he keeps going towards the sideline, he is going to get obliterated. A.J. Schaefer had him lit, ready to go, but a little cut avoided it. I think it's going to be a hold on Liberty Benton. Will be the call. Now what do you do here? Uh, I think they're going to decline it, force the fourth down. If you're Liberty betting on the 30, go ahead and go. Just throw it up maybe. Good things can happen. It does look like they're going to go for it. We'll decline the penalty. So fourth, and we'll call it about 12. I think if I'm Columbus Grove, I accept it just to move the ball even further away. This would be about a 47-yard field goal from Doolittle. Yeah, they're going to call timeout, I believe. So it's a Northwest Ohio Recycling timeout. Northwest Ohio Recycling Pandora paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392 or visit us online. Timeout to take it on the field. We'll step aside as well. We'll see what Liberty Bet will do on fourth down right after this. 38 years of Amish furniture, gifts, and home decor. Something for everyone. AmazingHomeFurnishings.com. Go Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Tabler's drive through in Columbus Grove. Start your morning off right with fresh coffee and donuts. Go get them Grove Dogs. It's 3.34 left to play here in our third quarter. A little different than what we saw that opening quarter where each team had the ball three times. Each team's going to have the ball here once. And that might just about do it here. Two high safeties post in the middle fields open for Liberty Benton. Garlock looks to throw. He's going to fire this one. Intercepted. I believe it's Reynolds that's going to come up with it, but field position-wise, knock it down. They're going to lose some field position because of the interception. Remember, it's fourth down. Tough to tell a kid not to take the interception, but they're going to lose about 15 to 17 yards on it. Yeah, it looks like, uh, like Reynolds, he cramp up after coming up with the interception. Does look like he's got both legs that are cramping. And how about his teammate <laughs> open him out, Mitch Ellerbrock. He went to first aid class over the summer. Point to toe and push. 327 left to go in our Hawker drywall scoreboard. Grove down 10, will get the football back. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna be okay, definitely cramps. Good shot of the chrome Ohio State decals on the back of those helmets. It's a good looking helmet. They give away bones for big time plays like a Buckeye. One of the things Coach Coles loves to say on the defense side, let's see who, how many bones we can give away this week for big plays. And buddy, if you ever played high school football, you want as many stickers as you could get on those helmets. Either that or your opponent's colors on your helmet. That's, that that you, was the other one. Yeah. Yep, you wanted, you wanted the paint. Yep, trading paint. Make sure that you're winning that war. Means something a little different in my background. <laughs> Rubbin's racing, right? That's right. He ain't cheating, he ain't trying. Can't really do that couch now with the NIL. Everyone's cheating. 
First down and 10 from the eight yard line here, under three and a half to go, third quarter. It's Columbus Grove back to that uh, tried and true straight ahead approach. Yeah, Delvin Multibine again, number 75, comes up big for that Liberty Benton defense. You'll see him as a defensive tackle on the left hand side of their defense. The down blocks that were working on that last try for Columbus Grove, they went base block man to man right there. Multibon hasn't been blocked yet all night long no when gain. they went one-on-one. -on -one. Sorry, no gain on the play. He's going to bring up second and ten. Good look from the Liberty Benton side of the field there. Great on blue uniforms. Quick throw. First pass of the second half for Grove. is going to be complete onto that far sideline. Still fighting forward. Looks like it's going to be a Dales Concrete first down. Yeah, might have heard the... Columbus Grove coaches up next to us. There you go, first down, first down. Look at Shep Hulker. Little wiggle on his side, one-on-one -on, -one on the bubble. Takes it and converts the first down. That's a huge first down for Columbus Grove coming out of their own end. They'll get 11 yards out to the 19-yard line. Back to that power formation on the left-hand side. Quick pitch, trying to get Braza to the corner. He's able to cut up field. He'll get to about the 25. That might mark him out to about the 26. That's a tough formation to defend because you're going twins to the far side, and then power back to the left. And look at the pull around right there by Cook. You got Schaefer getting a lead block, and you've reduced your secondary to that side. So big guys are getting on little guys, and you don't like that if you're a defensive coordinator. A gain of seven is going to bring up second and three. Columbus Grove would love nothing more. Take some time, make this a one possession game. Just chill in the air out there as well. Well, confusion in the backfield, a little trouble in the handoff, and it's going to lead to a small loss. Look at Javen Carpenter that comes free, makes a play in the backfield. Take another look at 62 it is. It comes free, makes the play, and that's Trevor Otley, the senior. Defensive end. Loss of yard, uh, a loss of a yard, easy for me to say. And third, and we'll call it about four, it looks like, from the 25 yard line. This is really a great picturesque setting right now as the sun is setting. You got the purple, the blue, the orange, the yellow. You got great football. This is fun. Third and four. Renner trying to run straight ahead with a lead block. And the Liberty Benton defense going to have nothing to do with that. That's the play that Renner burst on the last possession for a big run. But the block is not going to get done to the play side. Gets blown up in the backfield, forces a punt. Good stand by Liberty Benton defensively after all the momentum in the world have been with Columbus Grove. So no gain on the play. I think it was Ethan Bauer, number 50, made the play in the backfield there. The senior stepping up big at the right time. Columbus Grove can run this clock down to about three seconds before they have to snap it. Snap's going to go over the head of Ellerbrock back in his end zone, and he's going to finally punt it, and it's barely going to get out of his end zone. Disaster again on the punt team for Columbus Grove. A week ago, the same situation occurred, and they had to take a safety. Over the top of the head, Ellerbrock corrals it. Might be better served to punt it right there. Punts it late. Gets ran into, but they're gonna say it was deflected and. Yeah, it looked like Wages got his hand on in there as well. It's gonna go back to the three yard line. Boy, you almost would've been better off just to take the safety again, right? You're setting them up for easy scoring position at the three. And that is how our third quarter will end. So Liberty Benton trying to add on to their lead. We'll see if they do it when we come back. Tough break for Columbus Grove trying to punt. Snap goes over the head of Ellerbrock. He's got to scramble back into his end zone. Punt then partially deflected once he does corral. The high snap goes out of bounds at the three yard line. A net loss of about 22. And now Liberty Benton up 10. I have the chance here first and goal from the threes. We'll begin the fourth quarter. Cam Garlock 
keep it himself, and just like that, he's gonna get into the end zone and score the touchdown. Great inside fake to set it up, and they're gonna pull around, get the kick right there. The spring garlic for the touchdown. Great work by Javen Carpenter to pull around, spring his quarterback free. Anytime a guard gets the pull and get a free hit on a defensive lineman, they get excited. Even more excited, the result, a big touchdown for Liberty Bend. So makes it 23-7 on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard as Doolittle will come on and he will hit the extra point. So Liberty Benton able to take advantage of the Columbus Grove mistake. A 24-7 Eagles add on to the lead. We'll take a timeout here. You're watching High School Football Live on WOSN. 24-7 early moments of our fourth quarter here from Eagle Stadium in Liberty Bend. I want to tell you that our title sponsor for tonight's broadcast between Columbus Grove and Liberty Bend is the State Bank. Invested in Northwest and West Central Ohio with skilled objective and caring financial planners. Well, all the momentum in the world had the big interception after the huge drive that cut the game to 17-7. And then he had the terrible snap over top to head for two consecutive weeks in a row. Catastrophic moment on special teams for Columbus Grove. It's another short kickoff. As Liberty Benton doing everything they can to not get the ball into a Braza. Yeah, they learned their lesson early in this game, didn't they? I have a feeling a lot of teams We'll see film on Barraza back deep and say, we're going to kick it short all week long, or they'll kick it deep one time and then re remind themselves why we don't want to kick deep. So Grove down to 11-51. If they want to keep what is currently a 23-game regular season win streak alive, they'll start their own 36. Come out with a three receiver set out of that I formation. Told we would see this a little bit tonight. Give it to the first man through. Usually that is AJ Schaefer. Nowhere to go there as he's stacked up. Yeah, no, it's just a straight dive for Schaefer. But the big defensive tackles inside for Liberty Benton have been strong all game long. He's gonna make the play again. Multibine coming off, going to bring Isaiah Higgins in. Another senior, another big fellow, 6'2", 275 inside. No gain on that last play. He's going to bring him second and 10. Here's a quick pitch to get to the outside, trying to find ways to get Braza the football. Braza's going to be hemmed in. I think we've got another flag down on the far side as well. Usually that's a, you know, they're going to say not, not lined up before they snapped it. If there's a penalty in the offensive backfield out wide, that's usually <laughs> going to be something bad against the offense. The illegal shift has been declined. So it's going to be third down. It's going to be third and 12 after the loss of two of the run. Columbus Grove is going to have to do something in the throw game to come back and get back in this game again. Can't rely only on the run. They're just going to run out of time. And Not set uh, again. More problems here. You yeah. saw the frustration by the quarterback, Renner, because they have to call timeout because they couldn't get lined up again. And it is a Northwest Ohio recycling timeout. Our timeouts tonight brought to you by Northwest Recycling. In Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392 or visit us online. It's time out on the field. We'll step aside here as Columbus Grove trying to fight back. Columbus Grove trying to come up with something in the pass play. It looks like they're going to on third and long. Rollout pass is going to be complete to the near sideline. Hauled in by Lawson Mag. And it looks like that's going to be a Dale's Concrete first down for the Bulldogs. They got lined up, able to execute the play. A flood route to the right-hand side. Great job by Renner rolling to be able to find a big tight end in Mag. Move out to the 47, so gain of 13. Renner rolling out again under pressure. Fires this one downfield. That one's going to be incomplete looking to the far sideline. 
believe once again from Mag. It worked on the left hand side, or right hand side, let's come back to the left hand side. And get it done, pretty good pressure by Jake Elkert to make it a little bit tougher throw off the hands of Mag out of bounds. So it's gonna bring up second and 10 from the 47. And Columbus Grove got to come away with points on this drive. Just going to run out of possessions. And maybe have three possessions in this fourth quarter, and you got to score on all of them. Renner trying to step up, fires underneath. Complete to Halker. Halker is just a couple of yards shy of the first down as they get into Liberty Benton territory. Yeah, watch the courage of Renner right there. He's going to take a shot right there as he delivers the football. That's wages. Plays off the block of the tackle, comes inside, delivers a big hit on Renner. Pick up of eight, so it's a third and a short two from the 45 yard line. Back into that pistol look. Hand off. Barraza explodes up the middle, and he'll have a Dale's Concrete first down near the 30 yard line. I tell you what, when he gets to the linebacker level, look at the block by Schaefer on the backer right there. But you, you hold your breath when he gets in that secondary. Great open field tackle by Mason Mod. A little confusion in the backfield after the 14 yard run. Renner went to hand it off. Problem is there was no one there. He'll keep it himself in the broken play. And it's gonna result in a loss of about a yard. Mason Mod had the big two touchdowns in the first half. Come up big in the second half. Open field tackle on Barraza. He's played some fantastic football here tonight. Second and 11 now. Renner looking to throw. Rolling out, fires this one, and it's gonna be incomplete. Gonna try and hit Barraza, running the out, the flat curl combination. Barraza gonna get caught in between. See him going to the ground, tough catch. Instant replays tonight, sponsored by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. You see Renner, he feels, just watching him, it feels like he's more comfortable throwing on the move than being in the pocket. I don't know it if it's a sight way. thing. Some quarterbacks just like to throw moving the football as opposed to being stationary in the pocket. Third down and 11 coming up here for Columbus Grove. Renner under pressure. Runs out of one sack. He's going to load up, looking for the end zone. Lots of hands on this one. And it looks like the pass is going to be caught inside the five. Well, how about just going up and wanting a little more? That's going to be Reynolds looking for a big play receiver early in the year. Reynolds is a one. Can't believe Renner. He's Houdini. Gets out of the pocket. Gets out of the sack. And then Reynolds is going to go up. Remember, he was cramping. No cramps this time. Goes up and gets it, saves this opportunity for Columbus Grove. I'll mark him down at the three, so 29 yards. Run on first down will be just shy of the goal line. Try to get that inside A-gap run again. Schaefer cut down. Don't be surprised they run it again as Schaefer is a physical back at fullback. Schaefer will get two, second goal from the one. Line up into the I formation. Hand off, Schaefer again in for the touchdown. Can't get over, first to play by Renner to get free. Two, the catch by Reynolds. We got ourselves a football game again. It looks like more cramping going on. It looks like Schaefer after he kind of dove through to score, now with some issues, so they'll take a look at him, stretch him out very quickly. It looks like he's able to get up. A.J. Schaefer, remember last week against Pandora Gilboa, he struggled with cramps in the second half. Never had that problem because my muscles were never that strong and tight. So I was never a cramper, so I can't relate to what those guys are going through. But usually guys that cramp, they're the ones that have the nice muscles. It's Trader, the holder, make sure everyone's set. And it looks like he's without missing linemen, might be missing a team. Right now, Got to have missing a kicker. A kicker. Looks like they've got everything set here. Play clock down under 10. Tough to kick extra point without the kicker. And we'll get this one, bad snap. Elker trying to throw this one towards the end zone and it's gonna be incomplete, a little broken play 
on the bad snap. Well, everybody has the fire call, right? Bad snap, yell fire, fire, fire. Everybody goes to their pre-described locations on a pass route. Mag goes to the back corner of the end zone, just a little too far, not executed well. Huge problem though. Now you need a field goal, two point conversion, and a touchdown to tie this football game up. And we'll see what Columbus Grove can do. 24-13, we'll step aside here at WOSN. 804 left to go on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Columbus Grove able to get the score. A bad snap led to a uh, pass. It was no good on the two-point try, so now 24-13 in our scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Now Liberty Benton anticipating onside kick. Everybody up top. Chef Hawker is going to send this one deep. Going to take a bounce, and that's going to bail everyone out as it heads into the end zone. Yeah, fortunate bounce for Liberty Benton. They're playing onside kick all the way. Had nine guys in the first 10 yards of the box, only two back deep. A little punch kick over top, rolls into the ends or else they would have been in terrible field position. Eagles will have it at their own 20. Let's see if they can maybe put together a drive. Pick up a few first downs, 80 yards. That gives you a lot of opportunity to run out this eight minutes. It does, two timeouts and both teams hit pocket though. Columbus Grove. One first down by Liberty Benton. You'll start seeing them calling them. Cam Garlock in the shotgun. Handoff here on first down. Get out near the 25. Now this Liberty Benton offense will not be in a hurry. They'll get lined up, but they will take advantage of that 25 second clock. Good offensive coordinator tells your running backs before they take the field. Two arms on the football from here moving forward. Fultz will pick up four. It's going to bring up second and six. As Cam Garlock looking to the sideline, one to the call, and then checks the armband. They'll snap it inside of 10 seconds. He's going to be on the final second. See the play clocks down here on the field. Short to gain, might not have got anything out of Fultz on the run there. AJ Schaefer's helmet pops off. You see the beautiful red flowing locks on his head as he runs off the field. They have to come off for a play. The loss of one on that run. It's third and six here. Under seven minutes to go on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Your Liberty Benny, keep it on the ground here. They've liked the quarterback draw out of this formation on run. I don't think you throw here and stop the clock on an incomplete pass. Garlock in the shotgun. Sees a man coming off the edge. Roll to the sideline, gets the throw. It's gonna be caught. He's got one man he trusts. That Ball's is on the ground. his brother. Ball does come loose at the end of the play. Shep Hawker says Columbus Grove has it, but I don't think the officials are going to agree with them as it's a Dales Concrete first down to the 35. This is nothing more than a three-man route to this side. Curl flat with a clear out. Going to stay in and block with the inside receiver. Hits his brother. It's going to be popped out right there by Hawker. But I think Garlic actually jumps on it himself to save his own bacon. Only blue jersey in a sea of white ones. It's a 12-yard play, and it's a first down. Back on the ground, Fultz, and again, Columbus Grove is going to stack them up. Every white jersey on defense suffocated the runner, Mod. Garlic, if he pulls the football, he's going to keep running. That looks like another cramp up here. Let's see if that was, can't tell if that is Fultz on the bottom of the pile. Just cannot hydrate enough during the week, early in the season. That get potassium in you. We used to keep tons of bananas. We go down to the Piggly Wiggly, get as many bananas as we could, and force the guys to eat them because we didn't want to deal with the cramping issues. So the officials having a moment here as well. Unfortunately for Liberty Benton, it does stop the clock. Now officials will wind it, keep it going. But that was a big third down conversion, Garlock to Garlock, allows them to 
keep possession, eat some more clock. Getting to the point of the game where Columbus Grove needs a lot of things to go their way to win this football game. So we'll take an extended look now, he's able to get up. So looks like Braden Wage is number one. Now Wages have had himself a pretty good game, especially defensively. The run did lose a yard. It will be second and 11 once play resumes. The injured player off the field, so the clock does begin to wind. Good battle here. The first meeting between these schools just 20 miles apart. I'll play it again next year. Just change locations. Hopefully it turns into one of those long-standing rivalries. Schools are awfully close. Second down. Garlock run the entire way, and the quarterback draw is going to run into the official to help bring him down just shy of the first down. Quarterback draw again. It's worked every time they've ran it, except for they don't block the official this time. Not bad. See the, the forearm the official throws knocks him to the ground. Kept his eyes up, though. Good job by the line official. Gain of nine. It's going to be third and a long two here from the 43 yard line. You can tell that guy played football, he kept his feet moving as contact was coming to him, used the forearm to shiver it. Gotta be one of those moments as an official, you're like, uh-oh, there's nowhere for me to go, right? This happens, you're in the football field. Tries to get out of the way, quick screen, Garlock to Garlock, here's Lincoln again, free down the sideline. It's gonna be a foot race and it's gonna be brought down at about the Grove 30. Just a quick screen again outside. Every time they've run this, it's gone for pretty good yardage. Good block on the perimeter outside. Lineman release up front. Get it to the quickness of Garlic, who is stretched out after cramping early in this half. 27 yards there for Finley Truck in RV replay. So Dale's Concrete first down. 4.31 to play. Liberty Benton trying to salt this one away with a score here. Now Columbus Grove going to have to start using one of their two timeouts coming up soon. Cam Garlock can keep that one on first down. Kylan Mays, number 52. Another one of these sophomores that Columbus Grove really likes. Comes from his backside tackle position to tackle Garlock to the ground. Give him about a yard. We'll call it second nine from the 29. Next snap won't come until we're under four minutes to go. You see Schaefer at the top side, number seven, creeping like he was going to blitz. Garlock's going to keep it again. And a nice job by Landon Schrader to come in and knife him down. The Lathrop almost has him again. It's going to be Schrader that takes him, just gets enough of the shoestring to knock him to the ground. Gain of another yard, third and eight now from the 28-yard line. And Devin Multibine hopped off again for Liberty Benton. That's not a problem for them moving forward. Looks like a left wheel issue. Surprised Grove doesn't use a timeout here. I think on third down, if they don't pick up the first down, they'll definitely use it. Can't take him home with you. It's five receivers set. It's all window dressing. As Garlock's going to keep this one. Needs the 20 for the first down. And you see the timeout here. How good of an athlete is Garlock? Well, he's going to be one on one with Tad Cook. Tad Cook can't reach him because of the quickness of Garlock, but Halter, Hulker knocks him to the ground. He's going to be about a yard shy of the first down. No, it's really the football game here for Columbus Grove, right? Got to stop him on fourth down here if you're going to have any shot at all. With 2.58 left, you only have one timeout left. Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove does take a Northwest Ohio Recycling timeout. Northwest Ohio Recycling and Pandora paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, scrap iron, and scrap cars. Call 419-384-3392 or visit us online. Fourth and one for Liberty Benton here, Miles. Just under three minutes to go. You've got Doolittle. Do you maybe send him out there? 
I, I don't think Scott Garlic, the head football coach, is even thinking about that. This is an attitude play, right? You look at your, your big five guys up front and say, look, we, if we're going to be a championship team this year, we've got to get a fourth and one at some point in time. That's attitude play. Just come get it right now. They're going to bring wages back in, number one. You do have two timeouts for your Liberty Benton. You could go up and just fake that you're going to snap it, try to draw, but they're in their power set. Eagles need about three quarters of a yard. Lined up in that tight formation. And whistles. And the Eagles didn't like something. So timeout on the field. We'll step aside here. It's a Northwest Ohio recycling timeout. Big fourth down coming up for Liberty Bet when we return. Big fourth down coming up here for Liberty Bet. And it'll be fourth. Just shy of a full yard from the Columbus Grove. 21 yard line, Eagles up 24-13 on our Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Brady Roberts, Miles Holiday with you uh, live on this Friday night on WOSN. Don't forget 10 o'clock, switch over to WTLW TV 44, home of the sports report. Yeah, these are, this is a big boy pants moment right here, right? You look at your offensive line, you say who we want to go behind, whoever's eyes get big, have that intense look, that's who you run behind. It's a big fourth down coming up here. Garlock, they keep this one, trying to go the right side of his center, straight ahead. I got a little bit of the Reggie Bush push from his running back, needed to the 20-yard line from where the official ran in, Miles. It looks like he's going to be a little short. They're going to be short of the line to gain. Columbus Grove comes up with a stop, and the Bulldogs will have the football. Yeah, I'm like you. I thought after the, the second push, they were going to get it. Went with quarterback sticks. So tough to do if you're not a team that – is a, a, a center exchange quarterback under center team. You've been in shotgun all day, tough to get that done. No push at all. Got to credit Columbus Grove, still fighting. Got a chance with 2.53 left. So Grove will have it, thrown 21. Still need two scores. Got to get out of bounds if you're Columbus Grove. Come out in a shotgun, fire this one in, complete. And that one was nearly intercepted, and that was going to put it away. Yeah, Brady Berkemeyer, 34, playing in the middle of the field, reading the quarterback's eyes, just gets underneath it. Boy, I wonder if it would have been intercepted had he let it go. Second and 10 now from the 21-yard line. You'll see this Liberty Benton secondary play way off. Safeties are already at about 15. Three high safeties for them. Going to drop eight in the coverage, rush three. Bulldogs having some trouble getting set. Getting everyone in position, swinging out. Trent Barraza, Barraza trying to find a little bit of running room, nowhere to go there. Yeah, you're going to have to hurry. This is actually a lateral. Barraza just runs backwards. Reiner doesn't get to his drop because he wants to get out there so quick. For Liberty Benton, he did a good job keeping him in bounds. Third and 10 now from the 21 yard line. Grove down to just one timeout now. Penalty flag. It looks like Grove is going to be lined up incorrectly. Well, everybody moved except for the center. Kylan Mays didn't snap it. Last thing the Bulldogs wanted there with 2.20 to go. Third and long. Renner trying to fire. He'll go short. Hoping his receiver can do something. Good effort. But it looks like A.J. Schaefer will be shy of the first down, and it's going to be fourth down. Gain of about 13. Fourth and three. A low snap. Fire this one in a hurry. Pass to the sideline, be incomplete, and it looks like that will do it. Turnover on downs with a minute 41 to go. Give the ball back over to Liberty Benton, and all Columbus Grove can do is stop it one more time, and it looks like the 23-game win streak for the Bulldogs in the regular season 
will come to an end. As the officials stopping plays, Liberty Bend wasn't quite set, so another timeout brought to you by Northwest Ohio Recycling. We'll take one as well here. Late in the fourth quarter, we'll be back here to Eagles Field. Minute 41 left to play here. It looks like Liberty Benton is going to escape with a win, 24-13. Eagles have used their final timeout. It looks like Grove with just one remaining. As Liberty Benton will just go straight ahead here. And it looks like Columbus Grove not in any hurry to stop the clock. Cam Garlock looked like he's going to run all the way to the sideline to get the play, and then one is shouted to him, and he's able to run back. Second down. Cam just straight ahead. Power football with Garlock. Cam Garlock, Cam Garlock will get near the 20 yard line. And it's going to bring up a third and short. It looks like the ball will have to be stamped just one more time. Everyone lined up one more time for Liberty Benton. Third down, there goes the knee, and that should do it. As everyone's going to meet at midfield as Columbus Grove's 23-game regular season win streak will come to an end in the first ever meeting between the Eagles and the Bulldogs to go to Liberty Benton as Liberty Benton will score a 24-13 win this evening over Columbus Grove. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll be joined down on the field with our Miles Holiday and our player of the game when we come back on WOSF. Our 24-13, our final score, Liberty Benton gets the win over Columbus Grove as the Eagles will improve to 2-0 on the season while Grove will fall to one and one. So we await our player of the game. So Miles Holiday's made his way down on the field. We hope to hear from him shortly as the Eagles got off to an early lead as each team battled through that opening quarter. It was Cason Doolittle with a 34 yard field goal, made it three nothing. And then a couple of touchdown runs from Mason Maud, one from two yards, one from four, made it 17 to nothing. As Layden Landon Schrader got the Columbus Grove on the scoreboard as they opened up the second half with a long drive, made it 17-7. Then uh, Cam Garlock, after uh, trouble on a punt, snap went over punter's head. As uh, the Eagles took over at the three-yard line, Garlock able to score from there. A.J. Schaefer tacked on a touchdown late again to make the final 24-13. to So the Eagles get the win. We'll take one more break, and when we come back again, we'll join Miles Holiday down on the field, and we return right after this. Hey, once again, 24-13, our final. Liberty Benton gets the win over Columbus Grove, and our Miles Holiday is caught up with our player of the game. First dynamic dude. Our player of the game tonight it gets the WOSN Dynamic Dude uh, mini helmet right there. Mason Mod, congratulations on the big win. How are you guys able to get this big win over what uh, first time you ever played Columbus Grove? How, how were you guys able to do this? I think it was it started in practice on Monday. We knew we had to be physical. We had to be more physical than this week, and our offensive line busted their butts, and that's what got the job done for us. Yeah, talk about those big guys like struggled running the football a week ago. How important was it for you guys to get the run game going tonight? It, it was everything. We knew if we were going to win this game, we had to be able to punch it down their throats, and our offensive line did the job, and we were able to get behind them and do it. Uh, passing game going, you guys can throw the football extremely 
Dr. Garlic and a host of other guys running the football. Moving goes on. If you can run the football, how dynamic can this offense be? I, I think we're going to be pretty much unstoppable. I mean, if we can keep the run going the way it is tonight and we keep throwing the ball the way we are, it, it's going to be tough to stop. Yeah, you guys took a huge lead in at halftime off of your two touchdowns that you had in the first half. What was the mood like in at halftime? Um, we wanted to step on them. We wanted to put them away. We knew there was a streak over there, and we had a little bit of edge on our shoulders with that, and we wanted to put an end to that tonight. You talk about the edge that you guys have. Uh, you guys a little bit more determined this year than a year ago. Do you guys have plans for big things this year? We had a little bit of a sour taste in our mouth after last year. We, we, we know we can compete in Northwest Ohio with some of the best teams out here, and, I mean, they're up there with one of them. And we knew if we could pull this off tonight, it was a big program win. Yeah, big win, big things coming for Liberty Bent moving forward. Lisa, Mason Mod, our dynamic dude of the week. Nice job. Thank keep you. keep it going forward. That guy was tough tonight. Yeah, he was, as was the entire Liberty Benton team. Again, the Eagles snapping the uh, Columbus Grove 23 game regular season win streak 24 13 as they get the win here at home. We want to thank everyone for making our night uh, possible. Starts with uh, Nate Irwin, the athletic director here at uh, Liberty Benton High School. Of course, our uh, director, Ken Reeker, Josh and Sam on the uh, cameras. Of course, Kelly back at Master Control, their WOSN studios in Lima. So 24-13, our final. Liberty Benton gets the win over Columbus Grove for my partner, Miles Holiday, and our entire crew here at WOSN. Thanks for watching live high school football tonight.